And now, we should be back. My apologies here for Elgin. Jake Herman, Alex Federbush with you for this Friday evening match. No score. Midway through the first half. It's a beautiful flick. Yeah, and so the Elgin Wildcats, with a good run of play over these last few minutes, controlling the possession just as Coach Ronnie Michael had outlined in the pregame. Here's Zamarone in the midfield, leaves it for Ryder Michael. Hernandez. Luis Hernandez. Out wide to Pedro Tellez. Back to Hernandez. Useful touch into the attacking third. Has a through ball. Ryder Michael with a bit of a heavy touch. Still not dealt with completely, and now it'll be a goal kick. Good run of play here for the Wildcats, who were on the back foot for the first 10 minutes, survived that, and now they're looking to turn up the pressure of their own. With 19 minutes gone by, 21 minutes to play in our first half. Alex, what have you seen so far out of the Wildcats? They're really just sticking to their game plan, exactly like Coach said. A lot of passing around the back, looking up the middle, not too much running down the lines. I mean, they're conserving energy. It's very clear they're sticking to their plan, Jake. Zamorón to Memo Hernández. Zamorón back on the ball. Out wide to Lane Eckert. Ryder Michael. And now here come the Mustangs on the counter. Well, that's and a foul. A oh, guess not. The challenge made there by Luis Hernandez, the captain. And it prevents the counterattack from going forward for the time being. It's a very smart play. Mustangs want to turn this into a running game. Those are the ingredients that led to their success in the reverse fixture, a 3-1 to one win back on February 2nd. Looking to claim the Chupacabra Trophy, part of the local rivalry between these two schools. With a win today, of course, you have to win both matches to claim that trophy. And so the Wildcats hoping to at least tie here this evening so they can keep that trophy, which they've had since 2018. Knocked around in the center here. Good challenge by Juan Mendoza, who plays it up to Julio Villa. Villa nearly pushed off the ball, stays on it. Zamaron. Beautiful turn right there. Midfielders weren't quite ready for it. And the other way, come the Mustangs. Oh, they're in with a 2 on 0 oh. And they've missed it in the end. Nicely done by Macedo to cut off the angle, but that's a chance that the Mustangs would love to have back. All he needed was a little inside of the foot touch there, Jake. Instead, hit it with an outside dink to the right side of the net. Yeah, easier said than done. And Coach Cesar Silva Garcia will make a change here. That's a chance that... Guevara is not going to miss very often. 11 goals this season. Doesn't make it a 12th right there. And on to the pitch now is Omar Varona, who has six goals to his name this year. It was actually Esquivel on that last chance. Mark Esquivel, only a sophomore, was in there for Maynard. Had a great chance to get the Mustangs on the board first, but we remain scoreless with 19 minutes to play in our first half. Back heel flick. A brilliant little touch. Memo Hernandez has been pretty creative in the middle of the park today so far. 4-5-1 system in place for Coach Ronnie Michael and the Elgin Wildcats in search of their first district win. Recent run of form for Elgin has not been what they would like it to be. They have not scored in their last three matches. Been outscored by a 14-0 stretch over that period of play. Their close recent results came back in the early part of the month. Lost 3-1 at Maynard, lost 6-4 at Cedar Creek. They'll get a second crack at both of those teams down the stretch of this season. That throw-in doesn't leave the touchline. Pau No with the throw-in. Verona tries to flick it on. Dealt with efficiently by Memo Hernandez, who plays it back to Luis Hernandez. Now Memo down the left sideline. 
Looking for Villa. Memo Hernandez still on the ball. Warding off the defender. Now it's Villa. Plays a through ball in for Zamarone. And it's dealt with by the keeper for the time being. Memo Hernandez on the ball. And a couple of guys down on the pitch here for both sides. And we'll step away for a moment after that great elegant chance. And the officials waving the players back. It was a good effort that time by the keeper, Joshua Garcia, the senior, took an aggressive line on that ball and looks like he collided with Memo Hernandez, who's been very strong in the attacking third so far for the Wildcats. And as the training staff comes to the field, we'll step away for just a moment. 17-23 to play in our first half. Nil-nil here in Elgin. Hey buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to Vipe, B-Y-P-E dot com and hit Find Your School to see what Vipe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vipe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at Vipe, B-Y-P-E dot com. Well, we have a change at keeper now for the Mustangs as the training staff will help the keeper off the pitch. He leaves after having kept this match scoreless. The best chance for either team thus far this evening was had right there by the Wildcats. And let's hope that the keeper is okay. Ball rolling once again with Ryder Michael. Elgin likes to get the whole team involved in the attack. But when you do that, there's a chance of getting caught out. Juan Mendoza dissolves the counter-attacking chance right there. The new keeper into the game is Joshua Garcia. It was Terry Tu, the junior who had to exit with the injury. Now a throw in for the Mustangs. Varona's headed ball. Gets only as far as Hernandez. Played back by Eckert. Eckert's ball is taken away by Guevara. Guevara plays it through to Esquivel. Esquivel has an effort and a diving save. Fantastic stop by Macedo. Way to get in front of the ball there. You know, not as easy as it looks. The freshman keeps it scoreless. Now a throw in is dealt with at the back. And it'll become a corner. Not what Luis Rodriguez originally had in mind, but he had to adjust to the pressure applied that time by Calderon. It was a great chance overall. So the first corner kick of the match for either team belongs to Maynard. With 15 minutes and change left to play in our first half. Here's the ball in. It's a low ball. Back heel towards the box. And a whiff on the attempt. Pond tries to put it back in. That would be Pau No on that ball. Now a long distance effort is going to be become a goal kick. Dealt with nicely there by the Wildcat defenders.
so far the sturdiness at the back has been key for Elgin as the clock is now correct counting up towards 40 minutes as we near halftime that ball goes over the touchline before it can be played into the box The Wildcats playing with a roster of 16 players today. Coach Michael says that's the most he's had in quite some time. Of course, the team did lose a good deal of their players when COVID hit, and something Coach Michael talked about. The way they've had to adapt and rely on some younger players during this season. And the learning curve has been evident for Elgin, but Coach Michael proud of his young team for the way they've put themselves forth so far in this one. That one saved from going over the touchline, only temporarily. Ball back to Elgin. And after each team came up with a couple of chances, a somewhat uneventful last five minutes here, would you agree? Uh, definitely. I mean, it's just really play in the middle of the field, back and forth. No team has really been able to get a foothold in the game so far. Yeah, and you got to credit the Wildcat defensive system for that. That's a good tackle out there on the boundary by Pedro Tellez. And I believe he got that one to nick off the attacker last. He did. This is going to be an elegant throw. Wildcats looking to get out from the bottom of the table in district play still have a lot of time to do so kind of a cheeky back heeled ball in there but dealt with securely by the Maynard defenders who have been broken just once in this game there was one really really nice through ball played by Memo Hernandez but other than that it's been the defensive tightness of both squads that's been the story of the evening Now Lane Eckert on the ball. Check that. Luis Hernandez has to play it back. Villa now turns and has options. Through ball is dealt with defensively. Good play by Rodriguez. It's and a great strike. It, yeah, that made the chance a little bit more difficult. Just off his mark a little bit. Now, Alex, you what, you played soccer, didn't you? Yes, uh, <laughs> sixteen years, uh, yeah, pretty yeah. much the chunk of my life. High school, like at high school level, what's your what's your position? So I actually played as an attacking mid, which it looks like they actually don't have any of those in the four-five-one that they're playing. They're mostly using the wings as kind of an infiltrating factor. Here's the ball in through. It's gonna roll close to the touch line, but the official deems it offside so as an attacking midfielder you get to do a little bit of everything yeah I mean aside from the running it was mostly just trying to control the pace of the field Jake uh, a lot like these kids are doing right now yeah it's been a uh, it's been a game where Elgin has really tried to prevent Maynard from using their pace to their advantage in the reverse fixture the Mustangs won three to one and right now, Elgin keeping the score tight, nil-nil. It's been a pattern for them in recent matches. The question is, can they keep it tight throughout? You know, as a team with less depth than their district competitors, that's been an issue for them at times. Here's a ball in. Pau No on the ball. Plays a dangerous-looking cross. Still not dealt with here. Offside. Tell you what, that's clutch at the back from John Boggs. In purple for the Wildcats to deal with that it was a two-on-one situation for a minute there you got to be careful with those first touches you know one wrong touch and you're right into a forward this does feel like one of those games where one touch could make all the difference a couple of rivals fighting today to get into the win column for the first time in a little while it's been four matches since the Mustangs had picked up a win. 
Their last win came against Elgin back on February 2nd. They have tied their last two matches, including a scoreless tie on Tuesday against Pflugerville Connolly. So it's been going on about, let's see, 80 plus 20, 100 minutes now of goalless soccer for this Mainer team. You can be sure they're starting to get a little bit frustrated, but their defenders have been steady today. As Octavio Aranda plays a ball in, Macedo comes up to deal with it. And just in the nick of time, back into the middle of the pitch now. That ball is cleared into the defensive half, kept in along the touchline by Varan. His ball in. Esquivel couldn't get ahead to it. Trevino. And it's put out by Boggs, who's there to secure it defensively. Just under nine minutes to play in our first half. Ball in is dangerous. Bouncing in the box. Before Memo Hernandez redirects it. And I believe that's going to be last touch by Calderon. It is. Brian Calderon, the junior, puts that one out. And the Wildcats regain possession. We'll see if they can get some possession back here. After the Mustangs have controlled it for the last run of play. Getting ahead to that one was Calderon. Booming clear attempt by Anthony Jones designated as the sweeper today for Coach Michael's squad. Another foul against Maynard. Mustangs 6-6-3 six, six, and three overall, 1-4-2 and two in district. Wildcats 4-9 and nine overall, 0-7 oh in district play. Today perhaps a good chance that they're going to get to start climbing back into the win column. Just over seven minutes to play first half. Ryder Michael plays back for Janes. Jones's ball couldn't reach Villa who's been quiet today Julio Villa the leading scorer for Elgin see if they can't get him an opportunity here before half oh but an opportunity the other way after a misplay and it's dealt with once again by Macedo I mean you gotta give credit to the keeper there Macedo is always coming off his line cutting off angles working to make sure the attacker just you know, right past the net every time. Yeah, that was a chance for Omar Varona. But Macedo, not just a keeper, but a sweeper this evening. He's like a little Neuer out there, isn't he? <laughs> well, he's only a freshman, so Elegant soccer fans have to be excited about this young goalkeeper who has kept them in a lot of matches this year. Anthony Jones, the clearance. Neatly played there by the Mander defenders, not buying the fake from Zamarone. Wildcats put the ball near the touchline. Where Villa further challenges Rangel. Would like to see Elgin get a little more going in the attacking half. They actually will say that last touched Rangel. Ball goes over to Elgin. Down the touchline. Hernandez. Looping ball played in. But not too dangerous in the end. Bit of a naughty challenge there. We'll send it back over to Maynard. Sure you've given a few of those challenges in your playing days, Alex. Me? Never. Not a single <laughs> yellow card. Really? That's impressive for you. No, they uh, they called me the Sergio Ramos of the midfield is really what it was. Well, I, I wasn't calling any of those games. I didn't call you that. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is played through the middle and suddenly a chance for the Wildcats. It's dealt with by 
the center back that time, Fajardo, who's been excellent in the middle. And now another chance for Verona. Verona muscling his way into the box. Verona to his right foot, and he's made it 1-0. The goal is the seventh on the season for Omar Verona. And that's how quickly Maynard can strike. 1-0 to the visiting Mustangs. Great speed used to body the defender off the ball right there, Jake. Yeah, I was impressed with the strength there from Verona. Once he got that inside position, he was able to just shield the defender from, from interfering with him. He was able to get a clean shot off. and oh, There's no stopping that shot. No, I mean, those, those shots, those clean shots have been hard to come by to this point for Maynard because of the play of Macedo, the way he's been able to cut off angles, but nothing the freshman keeper could have done about that one. And four minutes before the half, it is 1-0 to Maynard. See how the Wildcats can respond going into the break. You would hate to go down another. You would love to be able to equalize. This is played up to Villa. Julio Villa. Back to Hernandez. Heading effort by Tellez is controlled by Verona. Omar Verona. Back to Memo Hernandez, and the Wildcats come the other way. They look to push up as a team. They look to work the ball up the pitch methodically. A style that, when executed right, can be really beautiful. So far today, though, it's been the midfield play of the Mustangs that has given Elgin some problems. Yeah, they're really not dealing with the pressure so well. Uh, unfaulty giveaways in the back. They really need to step that up. They want to make this a very uh, intense game going later into the half. Well, one player who's been excellent today for the Wildcats is Memo Hernandez. His creativity in the middle of the pitch has provided some spark. As it's played back to the keeper, Garcia. A little bit of pressure now being extended. Boggs pressuring the ball. Villa pressuring the ball. But cool as a cucumber right there is Rangel. Elgin will earn a throw in, though. How important is momentum going into a half in a, in a soccer match like this? I mean, I think it's everything. You're down 1-0. I mean, you have to be have the right mentality as soon as you enter and leave that locker room, Jake. I think it's going to be important for Coach Mike to really hammer that into his team. Here's a ball into Boggs. Boggs to Villa. He's onside. Villa is tackled in the box, and the official says play on. Elgin appealing for a penalty. It is not given. Perhaps fortunate there were the Mustangs to not concede the penalty. It looked like a little clip, but nothing too much. Yeah, the way this game has been called, you wouldn't expect that to be a penalty. Zamaron turns, but he's sworn by three Mustangs. Back on the ball, Zamarone. Hernandez plays a beautiful through ball to Villa. But Villa is defended well. Grimaldo has not let him leave his side. You can tell that the Mustangs are well aware of Elgin's top scorer. Oh, yes. It's a definite man mark by the center back there. There's nothing the Wildcats are going to be able to do if they can't kind of move the ball around to avoid that. Well, we'll see what kind of build-up they can get going to try and get their leading scorer free. For now, it's a goal kick for Maynard. Pineda. Great ball over the top, but offside. That's been the key today for Elgin, trying to negate Maynard's ability to use that speed on the edges and you know not necessarily an offside trap but they've been very disciplined in trying to force the Mustangs offside I mean that back line is essentially what's keeping the Wildcats in this game they've been so solid chance is definitely hard to come by ball in dealt with Guevara 
Plays it in onside. Macedo coming out to deal with this, and he'll get there in time. Otherwise, Varona was looking at a first half brace. Another wonderful clearance by Macedo. Quick little turnover there off the throw in. Ball goes back to Elgin as we near the end of our first half. 25 seconds to go. Can they muster something before the break? Ball chipped in. Via controls. Coming in on the left side of the box. Via to his left foot. And it's dealt with by the keeper, Garcia. And that will probably salt away the rest of the first half. Good to see Julio Villa coming to life towards the end of that half. Good to see Elgin trying to get him the ball. But that will bring our opening stanza to a close. It's the marker from Omar Verona, which is the only thing separating these two teams at the moment. It's just going to be very interesting to see how each coach deals with and adapts to the playing style of the other. I think it's essential for the Wildcats to start looking for other options other than possession in the middle, Jake. Yeah, we've reached the halfway point, and we'll be back with some halftime thoughts and some more information on these two teams. For now, thank you for watching the Elgin Wildcats soccer stream here on Vibe Live. And Elgin soccer on Vibe Live is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. For all the ways you love to play, Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easier than ever to gear up and have fun out there. Get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside in-store pickup at your Academy store. Gear up this spring at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Halftime report coming your way next. You're watching Elegant Soccer on Vipe Live. Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VIPEBYPE.com. Vipe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3 13. Got in another reverse. Breaking tackles. Dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds. Really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson. She fires the three. Oh my God, it went in. Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VIPEBYPE.com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vipe.com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, VYPE.com. VYPE.com. Hey buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to VIPEBYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VIPEBYPE.com. Yeah. For the end zone, touchdown, Ryder Hernandez on fourth and two from the 17. Sure, Vibe Sports brings you the best in area high school football, but Vibe brings you exciting high school volleyball action. Dive in the middle for the back row. Here comes James and gets the kill. Vibe brings you walk-off home runs on the diamond. Line drive, deep to left. It is going and it is gone. From lacrosse to the pitch to the court and more, the leader in high school sports coverage is Vibe Sports. BYP. The University Interscholastic League would like to thank its corporate sponsors. 
Without the generous support of these sponsors, many UIL activities would not be possible. The UIL gives special thanks to Balfour, Baylor Scott & White, Dairy Max, Dairy Queen, Ford, Fox Sports Southwest, Gatorade, Hellas Construction, Max Preps, the NFHS Network, Nike, Register My Athlete, Spalding, and Texas Farm Bureau Insurance. These generous corporate sponsors support the UIL in all its activities, music, academics, and athletics. The UIL appreciates these sponsors and their participation in all that the UIL does in Texas extracurricular activities. On behalf of the UIL and its corporate sponsors, thank you for supporting UIL activities in your community and enjoy the game. Halftime here at Elgin High. Hope you're having fun watching some soccer tonight with us on this Friday evening. Jake Herman, Alex Fetterbush with you here at the press box inside of Wildcat Stadium where the Wildcats trail 1-0 against the Maynard team that they're playing pretty well with today. But so far it's been the tally by Omar Verona that has made the difference. Yeah, I mean, possession is the ma uh, the name of the game here, Jake. And both coaches really seem to be digging in deep with that style of play. I think Elgin just needs to adjust a little bit. Maybe kind of look to sending a few balls over the top, wouldn't you say? Yeah, you know, it'd be, it'd be you know maybe a good idea to uh, get some more attacking going. I'm sure Coach Michael working through that right now with his bunch, who have struggled to score in games as of late in the second half. They have been blanked in three straight matches, and so far it's been the second half this season that has been their bugaboo. And, you know, as a team with less depth than some of the others in their district, that can be expected. But, Alex, you got to think Elgin's going to come out of the halftime break here with a little extra momentum, a little extra juice, given the fact that they stand to defend the Chupacabra title if they can tie up the score. Oh, I'm sure Coach Mike had hammered that into them by now, that, you know, this game and this half is really what they're playing for, especially for that trophy. I think it's imperative that they come out here with the energy to not only win, but maybe tally a few more goals. Well, we'll tell you what's going on around the district, as well as what's coming up next for this Elgin Wildcat team right after this. And after we get through that, It'll be second half action, so stick around. Thanks for watching with us here on Vibe Live. Vibe Live presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Back after this quick break. This is what matters. This is beyond X's and O's. This is the difference mutual respect makes. This is what character looks like. This is what defines us in Texas. This is sportsmanship. School sports, it's not the outcome that matters most, but the way the games are played. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Welcome back in to the Halftime Report presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors here on Vibe Live. Officials have returned to the field, taken their masks off, taken their cards back out. <laughs> and that means it's time for us to uh, tell you what's coming up next for, uh, for the Wildcats this, uh, this season. They had to move some games around because of the just the crazy weather that was going on here the last couple of weeks. Not anything like that tonight. It's been beautiful outside. But here's what's coming up for Elgin. After tonight's game against Maynard, they'll play next at home on Monday, March 1st, against Hendrickson. That game at 6 o'clock. Then they go at Weiss on Tuesday, March the 2nd. Then they play for a third straight day, so three days in a row. That one at home against Cedar Creek on Wednesday, March 3rd. The last fixture between those two teams was a thriller. 6-4. to four. 
So we'll see how that one goes. That'll be our next game, Alex, on that Wednesday night, or at least my next game here for Vipe Live. And then finally, to cap off their week, a busy week for the Wildcats boys soccer team, they'll play Pflugerville Connolly at home. Well, all I have to say is I hope they're paying their conditioning coach well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, as a, as, as a team with a short bench, I mean, uh, four games in one week is going to be a challenge that's going to be unique to them. And so the way they deal with it, I think, will be very, very interesting to see. And maybe they'll pull off a couple of, uh, couple of wins along the way. Meanwhile, for Maynard, their next game's coming up after this one. Oh, you know what? I don't have that offhand. I apologize for that. But the Wildcats will look to continue their climb up the table after this game as well. They're currently 7th place in the district, but their goal differential only minus 8. So not too many uh, not too many blowout losses for this Mainer squad. They've had a couple of ties as of late, a couple of one-goal losses along the way. You know, as a player, those are the most heartbreaking, I must say. Well, naturally. It'll be the Mustangs to get the ball rolling to start the second half here on Vibe Live as we get the score bug ready. And the second half off and running. Already the Mustangs try to play one in over the top using that pace. Guevara turns, has it taken away by Luis Rodriguez, throw into Elgin, Th sorry to Maynard. 40 minutes to go, Maynard perhaps 40 minutes for reclaiming the rivalry's bragging rights. Throw in by Calderon into the box. Dangerous. Macedo comes out, and he dealt with an effort from Varona before it's cleared away by the Wildcats back four. Looked like a bit of a shove there, Jake. <laughs> by who? The goalkeeper. <laughs> well, yeah, when you put that pink shirt on, you get to get away with some, uh, some stuff that maybe a defender or an attacker isn't quite able to. Macedo, the freshman, not afraid to assert his dominance in that box. Ryder Michael challenging. Now a ball in from the side. Headed effort is headed away by the defense. Now a great ball in. Oh, and what a save by Macedo. Point blank. He denies Guevara. Another excellent chance, but this kid deserves uh, freshman player of the year. Well, Coach Michael says he should be in that conversation, and he's proving that tonight. Out to the wing. Ball played in, Macedo up to deal with it, it's still loose, and a foul given, no, offside given on the play. It was a real creative ball played in that time by Alexander Rodriguez, the senior defender coming forward to join the attack, but nothing comes of it. Temperatures dropping now towards the 50s on this mild, cloudy Friday evening. Just over two minutes into our second half. Elgin just struggling to gain a foothold here in the midfield. Maybe that's changing here. Boggs to Villa. Throw in to the Wildcats. So far, very sturdy, relatively stress-free start to the second half for the back four of Maynard, who Elgin will have to challenge a bit more. Just haven't been asked to do too much so far in this one. It's been the midfielders of the Mustangs, Pineda, Don Juan, who have really controlled the pace. Zamorón tries to turn. And quickly on the counter. A great ball up ahead to Guevara. Has Verona with him. On the right side of the box. Cross in. And they just didn't get a lot of that effort. Guevara, the pass was a bit behind him. He had to go down to a knee. And he kicks it over the end line. Those are always tough to make, though. 
can't put too much blame on the attacker there. But you can see why Coach Silva for Maynor wants to get out and run just like that. Ball played to the middle. Don Juan jumps for it. Villa comes away with it. Hernandez. Played back to Jones. Taken away by Don Juan. Back to Rodriguez. His ball dealt with by Jones. Headed effort ends up with Verona, who slips over the ball. Back with Calderon. Up the, up the touch line. Verona. Shoves Hernandez off the ball. Hernandez recovers. Memo Hernandez has it taken away. Zamarone's ball. Only gets as far as Rodriguez. Hernandez tried a spin move. Don Juan had none of it. Throw into Maynard. Cheeky little move there. Yeah, good work off that left side by Don Juan and Rodriguez. Rodriguez, a senior leader of this Maynard team. Don Juan, a junior, enjoying a breakout season. Seven assists to his name. What a facilitator. Dangerous throw in. Was slowed down that time by Mendoza on the way in, the center back. And eventually the keeper, Macedo, can pick it up. He's made a couple of sparkling saves this evening, Macedo. And now a bad ball off the defender's foot will make an elegant throw. And would you look, Alex, at that full moon above the visiting bleachers. Oh, Just it's beautiful. absolutely beautiful. Just beautiful. A beautiful night for the game. The beautiful game, the beautiful night. How long did you think of that one? About two seconds. <laughs> and if it was longer, I'd be concerned. <laughs> Ryder Michael to throw. Goes under the foot of Mendoza. Jones plays a ball in. Tried to get it over the top to Zamarone. First sign of a little bit of pressure for Elgin. They had about a 10-minute stretch in that first half where they were pretty productive on the ball. Spent the rest of the half on the back foot. <coughs> Tellez gives it away. Played in over the top. Looking for Varona. Instead, it's Jones. Connects with Zamarone. Plays it back to Tellez. Tellez up to Hernandez. And he'll play it all the way back to Macedo. The activity, the work rate of Maynard giving Elgin some problems here. Only a matter of time before they get a second. Ball played into Don Juan. Don Juan couldn't turn it onto his right foot. Now a ball played in. Over the box. Verona controls. Long distance effort. Guevara on the ball. Guevara still on the ball. And he's hit the crossbar. Verona cleans it up and shoots that one over the goal frame. A couple of excellent chances going by the boards. And could this be a turning point of a moment for Elgin? Very close there, Jake. I mean, a few more inches lower and it's 2-0. Man, the pressure is persistent from Maynard to start the second half. Seven minutes gone of a 40-minute half. And Elgin fortunate that it's not 2-0. Another interception in the midfield. That one dealt with nicely, though, by Luis Hernandez. The activity in the midfield for Guevara and Don Juan is really what spurred the attack so far for the Mustangs. They've proven themselves to be a great pair, holding, attacking. They can do it all, Jake. Rodriguez to throw. Into the box. Useful touch that time by Calderon. But in the end, Macedo and Jones combine to deal with it.
And just not a lot of sustained pressure for Elgin. Through ball intercepted neatly by Tellez. But a bad bounce sends it right back Maynard's way. It has to be dealt with again at the back by Mendoza. And right now it's just survival for the Wildcats. They just keep on coming. Pineda got a piece of Hernandez and a much needed reprieve for the Elgin defense. Didn't look intentional that foul, but he fouled him nonetheless. Nonetheless. I mean, Elgin really needs to exert some form of pressure here, Jake. Well, we'll see if they can get it going now. They finally get to establish those forwards in the top half of the field, but... Ryder Michael trying to win the ball back. Can't do it. Got up Mike a little gingerly there. Yeah, good catch there, Alex. Michael coming up a bit gimpy on the play, but the play continues for Elgin. Memo Hernandez on the ball. Tries to play it to himself down the touchline, dealt with by the defender, but a throw in in the attacking third. So now the substitution for Coach Ronnie Michael. He'll remove his son, Ryder, who looks to be walking a little bit gingerly on that right leg. Hope he's okay. Throw in coming from Tellez. Memo Hernandez. Keeps the possession going. I would have liked to see the official play the advantage there, but the play stopped because Hernandez is shaken up. And this is an Elgin team that could ill afford injuries given their lack of depth. Hernandez is up. That's a good sign. It's a very sweep. important yeah. set piece here. Yeah, they're going to set one up. The sweeper, Anthony Jones, is the one directing traffic. Memo Hernandez to take the kick. From just outside the top right corner of the box. Bends one in. Beautiful ball. Chance for a headed effort. It'll be a corner kick. Beautiful ball. You said it. Perhaps the most threatening Elgin has looked since that chance they had back in the first half. I think for Elgin, it's all about picking and choosing their moments. You know, as a team that's down to the bare necessities because of the COVID crisis, I think having that kind of pressure is just what you need sometimes. Yeah, maybe just a way to, f to tire out these Maynard midfielders just a little bit. The second half has... Been a struggle for Elgin this year, trying to reverse that trend here tonight. Hernandez to take the corner from the left side. Into the box. And nearly over the goal line. They sort of bent towards the cage. Follow-up effort coming. Tellez took a crack at it. Controlled now in the midfield by Boggs. Luis Rodriguez. Hernandez thwarted. And here comes Maynard on the counterattack. Tellez plays it back. Via. This is last touch by Maynard. Elgin throw. So the 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 last uh, the last six minutes of the second half much better for Elgin than the first six minutes. It's like they're finally coming to life, Jake. And boy, do they need it. They do. Throw in by Zamarone. Over to Hernandez. Dangerous ball into the box. Last line of defense that time was Rangel. This is last touch by Maynard. Substitution. Don Juan will return to the pitch for Coach Silva Garcia and the Mustangs. And we'll see who's coming off here. Looks like Guevara gets a rest. Memo Hernandez with a long effort. Just wide. Don't think it would have had enough to beat the keeper Garcia, who runs a long way after that ball. Check that out. All the way across the track. That's a long, lonely trip for a goalkeeper, but made a lot sweeter by the fact that the opposition attacker missed the net, isn't it? I mean... 
as a keeper, I'm sure you'd rather run a bit to get the ball than get the ball out of your own net, Jake. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You know, keepers need exercise, too. Nothing wrong with that. Well, Garcia already getting more action today than he thought he would. The If you're just joining us, the starting keeper, too, was injured back in the first half, has not returned. Pile up in the middle. Hernandez boots it the wrong direction. Zamorón gets ahead to it, but now it's Rodriguez. Up the wing it goes. Anthony Jones covers. Still on the ball, though. Oh, the Mustangs. Interesting ball in that time. Off the right foot of Aranda. Now, a now another effort from just outside the box. Never really threatened. Just struck it wrong there. Yeah, it kind of spun out, spun out on him. Man, it might have rolled up on him a little bit. It's such a delicate thing, isn't it? <laughs> well, you're you're the one that's played. <laughs> you're the one that's played. It's been a few well-struck balls by each team tonight. Ultimately, the goal from from Mainer was into pretty much a wide open net because of the positioning that Verona had earned on the Elgin defense. Great play that time as well by Luis Rodriguez defensively for Elgin. Really made that chance difficult. Chance here for the Wildcats after the Maynard defense has a bit of insecurity. Oh, they turn defense to offense nicely, don't they? Oh, a beautiful through ball down the right wing. Trevino puts one in and it's Lifted up over the cage, left-handed save by Macedo. Hit the goalpost, but not the soccer goalpost, the football goalpost. <laughs> Still no good. Call that a single doink. <laughs> a lot of people don't realize how much strength you need in your arm to keep a ball like that from going in the net. you got to give them credit. So you're saying that save's harder than it looks? Way harder. You know. Corner kick coming. Chavino to take it. Ball in. On to the left foot. Looks but like unable to put it away. Looked like Calderon had a chance at that one. Looks like he stepped out there. Oh, yep, the ref saw it too. Oh, wow. Macedo with a with his first mistake of the second half. Steps out, corner kick back to Maynard. No. Oh, no. Take that back. I thought they were signaling for another corner kick or a throw in. Looks like it'll just be a goal kick. My apologies. So with about 23 minutes to go in this match, Wildcats in search of an equalizer. Nice pace that time by Zamarone. Earns a throw. As the lights begin to take their full effect here at Wildcat Stadium. Evening turns tonight. No one there to receive that throw. Header by Mendoza, directed towards Zamarone. And a bit of a mistake there in the midfield from Elgin. Sets up Mayner. Anthony Jones deals with it. Puts it out. It's quite a little foot race there. Yeah, I love the pace of Jones. You can see why Coach Ronnie Michael uses him in that sweeper role. He could be really the most important player in that 4-5-1 today. Well, he's certainly playing like one of the best and most important. Ball into Guevara. Calderon. Plays it back where Fajardo deals with it. And his ball is turned over. Wildcats trying to spring a counter. Tellez to Villa. Villa with a quick ball to Hernandez. One touch. Memo Hernandez. Can't get through the defense. Oh, but a foul. This will be this will be Elgin's free kick. Late call there. Very late. I'm not really sure what he called, but hey, I've been wrong before. Could be could have been a handball. 
Wildcats will push some men forward now. That's a virtue of this 4-5-1 system. You can push everyone forward. You just don't get caught looking. Well, down 1-0. Some chances they're going to take here. Jones kicks it. This goes all the way into the box. Offside. Wasted opportunity there. You know, sometimes it's better to go with the little shoot pass than a, a big long strike like that. Yeah, you would rather him lay that up a little bit. Nice little layup, maybe a little cross down the side even. I'm not sure why he went like that. Tellez wins the ball and plays a through ball. Zamaron to Villa. Back to Zamaron. Beautiful 1-2, but it's one too many offside. Beautiful buildup is spoiled in the end by the offside flag. Great job over there on the right side by Grimaldo for the Mustangs. And now a beautiful headed through ball. Sees Maynard in with a chance on the counter just like that. Guevara to his right. And he's missed it wide. Thought it went in for just a moment. Oh no, they pointed to the center spot. It's a goal. Oh, I didn't even know that went in. <laughs> it was a, a weird bout it of like silence it went through there. The side. I think Elgin is convinced that ball did go through the side. I don't think it went in, Jake. I, I did not think so either initially. The goal oh, scorer... The side's completely open. <laughs> the goal scorer reacted as if he didn't score. And actually, there's going to be a yellow card assessed here to Elgin. For arguing the call. I mean, arguing the call is, you know, understandable when it clearly went through the side of the net. Well, you guys at home get the benefit of a Vipe live feed to, to see what happened. On my first look, I thought that went through the side of the netting. That could be a tough break for Elgin. Well, Guevara gets the goal. It's his 12th of the year, and it is 2-0 for Maynard. That changes the complexion of this match, Alex. You know, it's a sad thing to see. I mean... I, if, if I was the referee here, I'd be checking with my assistant. I'm really not sure why he's not. Well, again, there's just, yeah, just two officials today, and the only other referee is pretty pretty far away from that play. There's a chance that went in. Uh, to me, it looked like it went through the side, but I'd like to watch it again. Either way, it's a goal. 2-0 to the Mustangs. The visitors have suddenly taken a much tighter grip on the match. Hernandez. To Ryder Michael. Good to see him back out there after... He had a lower body injury earlier. Zamaron can't turn it. Back the other way, Don Juan. Turned over. Memo Hernandez to the middle. Mendoza. Played back for Zamaron, but a misplay. Back the other way comes Esquivel. Esquivel turning. Playing it back to Calderon. His ball has a bit too much pace on it. Throw in to the Wildcats. I mean, these next 18, 19 minutes are crucial for Elgin. They need a quick goal and really need to apply some pressure. Man, and how do you respond? I mean, how do you respond as a team to to receiving a bad break like that? The questionable call doesn't go your way. All of a sudden, you're down two nil. What's the message got to be right now to those Wildcat players who maybe are a bit a bit demoralized by that decision? I mean, I know Coach uh, Michael was saying this, but they really need to put some pace in here. Pace, pace, pace. Send the ball down the touchline. You know, play it over the defender's head. Anything you really do can get an advantage like that. Well, before the game, you were saying, well, I don't really want to get into a run-and-gun game with Maynard, but the Wildcats now may have to try. And a turnover in the middle of the park. Macedo's going to come up and deal with this. Throw in to Maynard. A little bit of anger behind that kick. <laughs> I mean, if I'm Macedo, I I really don't know. Little delay here as the Mustangs player grabs the ball from the bleachers. Full moon has risen over those visiting bleachers. See if we can get a shot of that right there. There it is. Well, video doesn't do it justice. <laughs> And now I've messed up the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I 
In the corner. Tuang. Plays it out behind the net. Chin Tuang, the senior midfielder. Couldn't get that one into a dangerous area. We're past the midway point of the second half. And some new bodies into the game. Coming off the pitch, Pau No. Coming onto the pitch, Sunday Bonayama. What's your favorite day, Jake? I'm more of a Saturday guy myself. Hernandez. Jones. Chips it up for Zamarón, who regains possession. Turning, and a miscommunication. Couldn't find Hernandez there. Maynard counterattacks quickly. Luis Rodriguez. Through ball in for Hernandez. Trying to run after it. Earns himself a throw. Back on the front foot go the Wildcats. It seems they come in waves, Alex. Ten minutes on, ten minutes off. That's the kind of the, the way the balance of the momentum in this game has gone back and forth. The difference is Maynard has been able to convert twice. And I really think it's all about luck in these kind of situations. Manor has, uh, Maynard, sorry, has definitely had their good chances. And, you know, Elgin hasn't really responded. They haven't been given the chance. See if they can muster something here. Throw in to Jones. Nice ball to Hernandez. In traffic, though, Memo Hernandez goes down. No foul. Much of the chagrin of the Elgin players. Turning with it is Esquivel. Esquivel up the right touch line. And his effort is diffused. A throw in coming. It was put out that time by Luis Rodriguez. Great hustle back there by Rodriguez. 2-0 to Mayner with 15 minutes to play. The tallies from Guevara and Varona. Wildcats are to throw. Reverse fixture. Maynard won by a score of 3-1, a two-goal margin. That is the margin at this moment. Ball won back by Guevara. Tries to spring Esquivel into the box. Chance now for Rico. Who plays it back. Good fight that time by John Boggs. On the defense. Earns Elgin the possession. Not quite sure what they're doing right there, Jake. Yeah, that ball right into the middle. Maynard are able to get it back. throw into Elgin. Wildcats have four games next week. Looking to end this week and the month of February on a positive note. They've got some work to do. Zamarone wins the ball. But every time Elgin tries <laughs> to go forward with it, there are three, four, five white shirts in all around them. Flick towards the middle. Zamaron controls. Official says play on. Miscommunication there. But the ball is won back by Eckert. Zamaron with a challenge. Unsuccessful.
nearing the 12 minute mark of time remaining in this match. Through ball in. On the right side of the box. Chip shot effort over the net. A shot from distance wouldn't go for Edwin Pineda, the senior. Another beautiful save from Macedo. Yeah, he dealt with that first effort nicely, didn't he? The way he comes off his line, you'd think he'd had at least two, three years of experience in high school. Yeah, Macedo only a freshman. They really got to push the pace of play here. If I'm Elgin, that's that's how we're going to win, or at least try to draw this game. Well, right now, Maynard, 12 minutes away from taking the Chupacabra title back for the first time since 2018. That would be doing the double, winning both fixtures against the Wildcats, who, if they have something to say about it, have to speak up soon. Macedo dealt with that ball and it just seems like he sees the play develop very well does Macedo great anticipation oh but a bad turnover oh what Another a save. save Macedo denied the one-on-one -on -one effort it was looked like Aranda was in with a chance but no can do looks like he's having a party out there except it's all by himself <laughs> Well, Macedo says, hey, where's the help? You can't be doing that. If I'm a defender, mm -mm. Hernandez bodies his way onto the ball. Stays on it. Well, Memo Hernandez turning. Weaving through traffic. Another great turn and draws a foul. Under 10 minutes to play in this one. Wildcats down a pair. Looks like clipped him right in the nose. You can hear Coach Michael shouting instructions, perhaps moving some of his players around. Looks like they're going to put Anthony Jones up front, the sweeper at the back who's had such great energy levels throughout the match. Really 10 out of 10 from him today. Coach Michael... Trying to put him on the attack. Maybe get some offense going. Wait right there. The he goes to ground. Zamarone wins the ball. Up to Villa. Villa in for Zamarone. But it's a bit too far. bit too much weight on the ball in the end. And it's safely into the hands of the Maynard keeper, Garcia. Alex encouraging there from Elgin. Just take a tad off the gas. That's all they needed. Wildcats keep the pressure up. Zamarone. Officials play the advantage. Turning ball to Jones. Jones settles down for Villa. Zamarone plays it in for Jones. Jones tries to get there, but he's beat to it by Garcia by a millisecond. Coach Michael telling his team to up the pressure, win some 50-50 balls. No better message than he could give right now. He's not happy, Jake. Well, he's seen his team play well for stretches today, but been unable to crack the score sheet. I think consistency is definitely something Elgin can look to improve on as the season continues, even with such a depleted roster. Yeah, the Wildcats' last win came on January 22nd against Wimberley. A loss tonight would be their eighth straight. Throw in from Hernandez. Check that Mendoza. Goes to the middle of the park. Rodriguez with a towering ball on the left sideline. Catching up to it there. Guevara. Turning. Working against two Wildcat defenders and played nicely into the middle. Pineda still on it. Forcing his way into the box before he's met by Ryder Michael. And a foul. Gives it back to Elgin. Mustangs 
Looking for a third goal that would put the game out of reach. Perhaps the game already. Getting away from Elgin here with seven minutes to play. But the way the Wildcats have generated offense in the last few minutes, you have to think that maybe there's hope. High arcing ball in. Caught by Macedo. Wildcats will push up. Well struck punt. Maybe the best punt of the night for Macedo. Goes over the head of Hernandez. Maybe too well struck. Surely that's offside. No, it's onside, but it's not a dangerous ball. Now, if I'm Macedo here, I want to push my attackers and even some of my holding midfielders all the way up here. I think he needs to take a bit more control of the game. That's a great ball from the back. Rodriguez connects with Hernandez, but Hernandez can't connect with Jones. Throw into Elgin. Just been that last pass that's been lacking. A couple of times the Wildcats have put together one, two beautiful passes, and the third just hasn't been there. No, it hasn't, and it's not like it's a bad showing for the Wildcats either. There is definitely some promise, some intention that they can definitely build off of here. You well, know. they've looked dangerous a few times on the attack, but haven't been able to crack the code. Good move. Mendoza. Plays it all the way back to Macedo, and it's just what Maynard wants right now. Keep the ball in that half. They don't care who possesses it. They just want the time to run. Approaching the five-minute mark left in this match. That ball takes a deflection, and it's in with Hernandez. Memo Hernandez plays it up for Michael. It'll be an elegant throw. Anthony... Jones was calling forward in the middle. Never got it. He was well marked that time by Fajardo, the center back. Number 11 in white. Throw in coming for Elgin, who tries to battle against some fatigue and get on the score sheet here. Another throw. It's been disciplined. It's been clean. Hasn't necessarily been pretty, but it's been effective for the Maynard defense. Hernandez. Ball into Villa. Tries to switch the play for Boggs. And a handball there will keep it down here. This is a great chance. Yeah, good anticipation there by Aranda, the sophomore. Tried to jump the passing lane, but couldn't do it. Official says, hey, Elgin, you can kick that ball from a little closer, and <laughs> Julio Villa gladly obliges. Uh, no argument from the Wildcats on that one. Now, does he look like he's going to shoot this ball? Well, it's from about 35 yards out on the 25-yard line, but the goal on the edge of the end zone. That's a good thing about playing on a football field. You can see how far these free kicks are. You need a deflection here. Looks like Villa is going to give it a go. The run up. The kick. Has a go at it. There you go. Tough carom. Loose in the box, but finally dealt with by Garcia. And perhaps the best chance of the night goes by the boards for Elgin. Well, there was a deflection, Jake. Yeah, who deflected it? Was it the keeper or the defender? I think it hit off the defender, hit the keeper, went right up in the air, and the keeper pounced on it. Yeah, maybe not the best control off of the first bounce, but after it initially hit the keeper, Garcia quick to react. And perhaps that was the chance for Elgin to get back into this one. Probably needed to score there with only four minutes to play in this one. Got okay, to go a little tighter. There you go. So with a win today, Maynard improves to 7-6-3. Moving up the table in district, they would now just be, well, they would be tied now, actually, with Pflugerville Connolly, but Pflugerville Connolly would own the goal differential in that one. Elgin with a loss would fall down to 0-8 in anticipation of a tough slate of games next week. Hendrickson, Weiss, and Cedar Creek next up. Three minutes to play now. 
Long distance effort, nowhere close. And a long jog for Macedo. Wildcats put together a better second half today than they have in recent matches. They've been keeping it pretty close in the first half. It's been a pattern for them against Weiss, Connolly, Bastrop, and then most recently this Tuesday against Pflugerville. It's been the second half that's given them some issues. As we get the camera back up and running. <laughs> it's been the second half that's given them some issues, but the half they put together today... It feels like they've deserved a bit better. And Memo Hernandez just went down to the tiff to the pitch, draws a foul. Wait, uh, let me help you with that. As the camera resets, action continues. Wildcats push it up the left flank. But it's now dealt with by the Mustangs' defense. Sliding challenge. Well done by Jones to win possession back for Elgin. Audio has returned here. After tying against Bastrop and Connolly, the two teams above Maynard on the table, a win today puts them right back into the playoff chase here in this district. 32 seconds to go in this one as the Wildcats will fall to 0 at 8 in district play. A better second half than they've had in recent games. Couple of chances they're gonna wish they could have back as Jones plays forward with it. He's been a spark today. Memo Hernandez lets it go through. They were to pick up the ball is Lane Eckert. Eckert down the left wing. He puts one in and it's in off the crossbar. Will it be stoppage time? With only six seconds to go, it is Lane Eckert with a tally. And Elgin has cut the lead in half. Sensational strike. Bar down, absolutely nothing the keeper can do about that. Beautiful step over on that play, by the way. Smart of the other attacker not to touch it. Yeah, Memo Hernandez with a crafty play there to let it go, but with only six seconds left, five, four, now three, it's going to be just not enough for Elgin to come back and get the win. The final score here at Wildcat Stadium. The Maynard Mustangs, two, and the Elgin Wildcats, one. The goals from Maynard, courtesy of Varona and Guevara. The Elgin goal coming with just six seconds to go for Lane Eckert. And hopefully that gives the Wildcats something positive to build off of heading into next week because they've got four games coming up. They'll need to be on top of their game. Alex, it was fun coming out here. First broadcast for us here on Vipe Live for Elgin Soccer. And a good match to boot. A good match today. I think there's a lot of improvement both sides can do as the season progresses. Way to play. Way to come for the second half, I'd say, to Elgin. And, you know, it's only up from here. Player of the game today on the Elgin side has to be the goal scorer, Lane Eckert for getting Elgin on the board late. I would also like to shout out the efforts today of both Memo Hernandez and Anthony Jones, a couple of guys that were very important for the Wildcats in terms of when things were going right for them. You know what? I think you're forgetting the keeper, Jake. <laughs> yeah, David Macedo, absolutely. The freshman keeper kept Elgin in this one, no doubt. No doubt. Alex, any final thoughts as we prepare to sign off? You know what? I just had... It was a great time here. I love this. And... 
better on, better luck for Elgin. We'll see you next time on Vibe Live for more Elgin soccer. I'm Jake Herbin for Alex Federbush and our Vibe crew. Good night, everybody.